Hey, good morning. How y'all doing? It is Well Red Beard, and it is a damn fine day to talk about a book. We are here for a book review. Today, we're going to talk about The Devils and the Flaws and Other Dark Truths by David Nile Wilson from Crossroad Press, Maccabi Inc. Uh, first of all, killer title. Love the title, The Devils and the Flaws and Other Dark Truths. That is a badass title. Now, um, I came across uh, David Nile Wilson, Crossroads Press, when Silver Shamrock went under, leaving a lot of authors that I like and respect um, kind of in the lurch. I mean, some of those people, their um, their books had just come out, you know, within the, the last month. And when that happened, I noticed that Crossroads Press stepped in and gave a lot of those books a home very quickly. Now, I don't know much about the, you know, the publishing industry, but that felt like a really cool thing to do. Like, I mean, don't get me wrong. I know that, you know, Crossroads was getting some, some hella good books. Uh, one of them, uh, um, oh shit, Sunrise Alice, uh, which I read earlier this year by, um, Jeremy Hepler. I mean, I absolutely loved that book. So, you know, when it was rehomed, I was really happy, but there were, there were others too. Like, I think they got, uh, Brennan LaFaro's news. Wait. Yeah. Is that right? I think. No, not Noose, but, um, which I think they did. No, they didn't do Noose, but they did. Uh, they picked up uh, Brendan LaFaro's book, and I'm drawing a blank. The Slattery Falls. Slattery Falls. That's what it is. So, anyway, I saw what I perceived to be him doing something really cool for the community. So, when he reached out and said, hey, would you like to read my book? I was like, yes, absolutely. I, you know, I feel that it would be a very, very small way for me to give something back to what I, like I said, perceived as being a great thing for, for, you know, small press horror authors. So, um, I got this book and I didn't know much about David Nile Wilson, which I kind of feel silly for not knowing a lot about him. I mean, he's a very experienced, uh, seasoned writer. Um, you know, a lot of you guys that I read, um, I mean, just because of the way the calendar falls, you know, they wind up being younger than me, you know, and David's not, but I mean, I'm just saying you could feel the experience. You could feel the seasoning and the writing. You could feel, um, all of that. So, um, I'm going to read a little bit about him just real quick because I didn't know any of this shit. He's a USA Today bestselling multiple Bram Stoker award winning author of more than 40 novels and collections. He is a former president of the Horror Writers Association, and he's the CEO and founder of Crossroads Press Publishing. His novels include This Is My Blood, Deep Blue, and many more. His upcoming works includes a novel called Tatter Remnants and Into Nothing. Uh, his most recent published work is the novel Jurassic Ark, a retelling of Noah's Ark story. I I'll leave it at that, but the dude is, is written a lot, and... and um, I think, you know, what he told me, and I haven't done a ton of research on it, is he spent a lot of, again, he's been writing for 40 years, at the, I mean, a long time. Um, he spent some of that time doing, like, adaptations. Like, he wrote, like, Star Trek adaptations and, like, Stargate adaptations. And, you know, so big science fiction properties that he was, you know, doing doing the writing for. So I found that kind of cool. Um this collection is really good. Um, I'm giving it four stars. I, I really like the book. And David knows because David's followed really closely along with my shorts on shorts. There are shorts on shorts up for every story in this book. So go check those out. We'll pull those together into uh, the Devils and the Flaws playlist at the end of this. But uh, uh, some of the stories were abstract. Um, some of them were not. I tended to like the ones that were not a bit more, but the ones that were abstract, um, like I said, you could feel the, the intelligence behind them. Like, and, and, um, and I, I, one of them I read and I said, David makes me feel dumb sometimes, you know, and, and that's okay. A lot of authors have done that. Peter Straub just did that to me with ghost story. I mean, I, I felt dumb. It, it doesn't mean I can't appreciate it. I mean, I didn't personally love, that particular story as much as like the horror world loves it, but it doesn't mean I can't appreciate it. So I guess what I'm saying is like, even the stories in here that I didn't like as much, uh, I was able to, you know, really appreciate. So, um, we're here to talk about my top four. And if you follow the shorts on shorts, it probably wouldn't be too hard to guess 
um, what those are. And I'm not going to go too much into each individual story, but um, the stories that I loved in this book, I really loved. Um, now, uh, honorable mention real quick, there's a story in here called The Last Patriot that I really liked. It's about, um, um, you know, kind of like a, one of these QAnon type guys, you know, conspiracy theorists that makes a plan and, and tries to follow through with the plan. But, uh, but of course, he kind of comes off as a bit of a bumbling idiot like from the get-go like he wants to do this thing but he wants to like write like a comic script for it while doing it and uh, but what was cool about the story is after he is um after he fails at his initiative and he fa after he fails at his um project that he's doing is what happens when other people pick up his cause pick up the uh the script pick you know and um and there are people out there like that, man. And it's, it, that part of it was kind of scary and freaky. So that's an honorable mention. But my fourth favorite story in here is Interred. And uh, it is about a, um, a man that has died. And he is getting ready to be buried with his wife and daughters uh, who were buried there long before he died uh, because he killed them. He killed him, but before you know, he killed him. He he bought this um, this burial plot, and um, the only surviving member of the family, his son, is you know willing to do anything to keep his father from being buried next to his mother and his sisters. And it is a killer story. Um, my third favorite um, story in here is etched deep, and it's a story. It starts with a scene of a dog that kind of breaks and kind of bites at one of the the little girls and the father takes it out and does the the deed uh you know the what you would expect uh you know a um a country man to do in that situation to a dog that's tried to bite his his little girl uh uh but it you know it carries on and and this is like um we're seeing like the next generation and, and the the way that um like those values are instilled in the next generation, but it's a, it's a really, really, um, cool look at, at that idea that, you know, when you break like that, when you are willing to lash out at the people that love you the most, um, you know, in this case with the dog, you know, the hand that feeds you, but when you're willing to, when you go to that point, like there's really no coming back you know i think about like um domestic abuse i mean you know, you know it happens one time there's really no coming back from from stuff like that and, and it's a deep look at that and i, I just really enjoyed etch deep my time my number two favorite story in here is slider and it is baseball horror and i didn't know that i needed or wanted baseball horror but it is a awesome story about a baseball artifact it's about a ball that killed a man right live in the game he was pitched it was hit right back at the pitcher hit him in the head killed him on the spot and so it's got this um you know baseball collectability but also this um you know um creepy objects of death type collectability you know, i guess there are people out there like that you know and uh um, so it's all about the ball and it's all about the story behind the ball. And it's, uh, um, it's a cool story. And I think I said, when I read this, you know, I've never said this before, but I know Stephen King loves baseball. He's, you know, co-authored books about the Boston Red Sox. I think Stephen King would really love this story. It's called slider. Um, so my favorite story in the book is, you are just like gods. And it's about a, a young man climbing Mount Fuji. And it's all about uh, generations, the legacy his grandfather left and, and his father and trying to live up to his father's expectations. And he's climbing Mount Fuji. And of course, Mount Fuji is surrounded by the sea of trees, the suicide forest, but it also mixes in all this, um, I don't want to say Japanese culture, but you kind of like, you know, like Japanese traditions and stuff. And it, it finds a really cool, I mean, I'm not a huge fan of haikus. Um, I've always said that, you know, um, I don't like, like rules. Like, I, I mean, you know, cause what you've done with the haiku is you've taken a thought, 
but you've had to force it into something. And I don't like the idea of forcing it into something. But anyway, this story, you know, takes is a fictional story that uses haikus throughout it. And I, I found that really cool. Like the usage of the haikus through this story is really cool. And again, that's called You Are Just Like Gods. It's a Mount Fuji story. I like I like. I mean, I love stories about the Suicide Forest, but, you know, Mount Fuji uh, just had a lot of cool aspects to that one. So um, that's it. That's my uh, my top four. Um, interred, Etch Deep, Slider, You Are Just Like Gods. Uh, this is The Devils and the Flaws and Other Dark Truths. Uh, I've got a couple more of David Nile Wilson's books I'm going to be getting into in the next couple months, hopefully. I've got some other books from... Um, crossroads press that i'm also going to be getting into so again um you know check out david nile wilson definitely check out the press um sunrise alice amazing i, I like slattery falls there's um i mean there's a bunch there, i know that there's a bunch that he he's put out now and, and i don't pretend to have I, I mean i think he's got like under i mean he at one point he said there's like 500 authors that you know published through crossroads press so that's really cool and they don't just do horror they do i think he's got like a fantasy imprint and like a sci-fi imprint uh macabre Inc. is the horror imprint so definitely check out crossroads press and david now wilson this has been well red beard that's my review i hope you like it liked it liked it i hope you liked it i hope you're liking enjoying ah, messed it up I hope you're enjoying all your books as much as I am. If not, you're reading the wrong damn books.